Hello, Cleveland County. This is Deborah Blanton. I am host for the show Cleveland County Kitchen. And we are here today with Corinne Brandhorst, who is a chef. She is a baker. And uh, we are happen to be in her kitchen in Bessemer City. The uh, first and most important question, I think, is when do you do all this baking? Depending on my schedule for the day, I either get up at 4, 5, 6 in the morning to hit the kitchen. On Fridays during the heavy season in summertime when all the farmer's markets are up, I bake for about 14 hours on Fridays. So today was a very light bake. As you can see, this is probably about a tenth of what I normally do on a regular heavy baking day. Gracious, that makes me tired even just to think about what's involved. Opening a can of soup's about as far as I go. Or that would go well with one of these breads. So Corrine, if you can tell us what you have here, it all looks so good. Well, starting from the top, we have a rustic garlic bread. You can see the red from the paprika. It's infused with herbs and spices, and there's a spiral of chopped garlic within. This is an excellent bread for making grilled cheese, believe it or not. And of course, it goes well with spaghetti and sauce or just about anything that you like a little bit of spice with. We have some honey wheat bread. This wheat bread uses honey from my own bees. You can see the beehives outside. We have a dark Russian black bread. We have a honey almond that's stuffed with cinnamon, brown sugar, and more almonds. And then we have a cinnamon raisin bread, which we will slice when it thoroughly cools, and then you can see the pretty spiral in there. All right, Korean. Now, we have a little history here about how you even got started in this business. And um, you are from Switzerland, is that correct? My father was an executive chef. He traveled the world doing chef things, and cooking and baking and what have you is the family trade. His brother was also a well-known chef in Sweden. Grandfather, uncles, and nephews are all in the trade. My mother also had a well-known catering business on Long Island, so food is in our in our blood, it's what we do. What you have created here is not only good to look at, good to taste, but there is an amount of artistry if you're going to have, what, a roll of garlic in something? I mean, that just sounds fascinating. So, Corinne, um, when we first got here, you informed me that the kitchen that you're using now uh, was a carport that, that you all developed. Uh, and and put and made as a kitchen. So tell us about the stove that we'll be looking at. It looks very impressive. I have three ovens. I have a double wall oven, which has a capacity of about five loaves of bread each. And then there's the big oven, which holds 16 loaves of bread at a time. It is a dual fuel stove and oven combo. So I've got gas on top electric inside, and then the added feature of steam injection. When I make hard crusted breads, we can inject the steam without using ice cubes or any other methods a regular home cook would have to employ. So that certainly helps speed up the process and bring out a finer product. Now, we did discuss briefly about the fact that your kitchen is inspected. Can you talk a little bit about that? North Carolina Department of Agriculture comes out and does a one-time inspection of a home kitchen for processors of bread and baked goods. Uh, we are allowed in the state of North Carolina to produce bread and baked goods at home and sell them in local markets. And they did come out, and obviously everything was fine, and I roll along, and off we go. Do they come out periodically? Uh, for instance, I know um, kitchens at restaurants get inspected, uh, is it once or twice a year? So do they come out more, uh, more than one time a year, or is it one time a year, or is it one time? North Carolina Department of Agriculture will come out the one time. My kitchen is in compliance with all their regulations, mm -hmm. 
They will come out only if there's a complaint registered against me for any reason. I do also have several certifications in food and cooking to help bolster that, even though it's not necessary being in the food business, the more the better. Well, I'm sure with as, as delicious looking, and I hope I'll be tasting something here in just a, just a few minutes to know exactly how good, I'm sure you'll have no trouble. And maybe you'll have to be cooking 14 hours, two or three times a week to take care of the demand. One final question. You are Ladybug Farms and Bakery? That's correct. All right. Well, Corrine, thank you so much. Uh, we've looked at your products. Uh, we will be talking here in the next segment of the show about the nutritional value and some of the things that you're using with your breads. And then we're going to be in the kitchen with you watching how you make a bread. So stay tuned, Cleveland County. We'll be right back. Here in Cleveland County, many children struggle to develop due to the lack of guidance and shortage of positive role models. At the Boys and Girls Club, we make it our team's mission to aid your child in becoming a better student and, more importantly, a better person with a brighter future. When your child comes to the club, you can be assured they are being guided in a manner that is beneficial to the growth as an adult that is visible in their lives. Please consider giving your child the opportunity to be the absolute best they can possibly be. Please support your local Boys and Girls Club today. Well, welcome back, Cleveland County. We are, I'm sitting here with Nancy Abasiekong, who is the Extension Department's Family and Consumer Scientist, and with Corinne Broadhorst, who is our chef that we've already interviewed uh, with all of her products. And we're talking about the nutritional value of what Corinne makes. So, Nancy, if you want to start us off with uh, your knowledge of what the products that we're dealing with here. Okay. Well, we've seen such beautiful breads, and it smells great here in the kitchen. When we're looking at breads, that's one of the grain. It's in the grain group. And when we're thinking about the uh, food guidelines that USDA and our Choose My Plate, we know that the grain portion is one, about a fourth of the plate. Um, then we have half fruits and vegetables, a small uh, quarter uh, size for the protein, and then dairy. Mm -hmm. So bread would be in that grain segment. Mm -hmm. And when we're using grains, uh, we're to get about, between for children, three to four ounces of grains a day. And most adults, five to six ounces or five to six uh, servings. And uh, we're looking at a one ounce serving uh, equivalent. Okay. And of course, the other thing with that is we know that we get some added nutrition when we make have whole grain choices. Yes. And uh, I believe uh, this bread, the Russian, the Black Russian mm -hmm. bread, would be probably the most nutritious of what we have here. We have sourdough, we have the, this is tomato, tomato basil, basil. Tomato basil. Mm -hmm. and this is honey wheat. honey wheat, so we have the wheat and then the darker wheat bread, right. so we're talking really quite nutritional value with all of this. Yes, mm -hmm. and when you're using grains or when you're looking at breads, we're getting some vitamins, mostly B vitamins there, mm -hmm. uh, some um other dairy fiber, we'll get dietary fiber, and some minerals okay. also uh -huh. in, uh, in our grain products. And with breads, of course, we don't eat bread for its high nutrition, but we are getting some nutrients and, again, the, the fiber. More with the whole grains. Okay. And we want, about, we want at least right half here. of the grains that you eat in a day to be whole grain. Okay. 
Well, Corinne, tell us what you are using with some of your breads that you're getting from our microbreweries around here. Been working with several local microbreweries, Newgrass Brewery in Cleveland County. We've just met and touched base and we'll be using their grains in our spent grain bread. And that is where the brewer brings me, the beer brewer brings me his wet grains. Mm -hmm. And I make it into a really sturdy, heavy duty, multi-grain bread. This is the Russian black bread, but this is the most comparable to what I would make with a spent grain bread. Mm -hmm. In the spent grain bread, it has the whole grains that were already pre-soaked in the beer making process. Mm -hmm. So it's ready to be baked into a bread and make a very hearty multi-grain bread. Uh, and I'm just curious, does it taste a little like beer or when you cook, everything evaporates? The grain was removed from the beer making process before any fermentation took place. Okay. So there is no beer taste to it whatsoever. Uh -huh. And it's using a byproduct from the beer making process. So instead of being used, thrown away, or maybe used for animal feed, we can take it and make a more nutritional bread than a regular white bread or multi-grain bread by using the spent grain bread, yes. especially from our local breweries. Oh, yes. And, and then they don't have to worry. I mean, they know their byproduct is being used. Uh, it's extending the life of what they're using. Exactly. Well, I think that's just amazing. It is. Uh -huh. And um, so, Nancy, do you have any final comments about nutritional value? Yes. And when you're shopping, Talk to, at, when you're at the farmer's market, certainly you can talk with the baker, but in the grocery store and even at the farmer's market, look for the label. Mm -hmm. And at the grocery store, looking at your ingredients list, you'll want to have the first ingredient whole. If it will say whole rye, whole wheat, uh, whatever the product is, then that is a whole grained bread. Mm -hmm. We can have a dark bread that was not necessarily a whole grain. So looking at your label or talking with the vendor mm -hmm. will help to tell us whether or not uh, it's a whole grain well, product. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Cleveland County, stay tuned. We're going to be in Corrine's Kitchen uh, making some bread, and we're going to be actually kneading it and cutting it into loaves. So stay tuned. <music> I chose to come back because I had four children, a wife, I never completed high school, had to quit my senior year to go to work. Got laid off, didn't have too many options, and seemed like a good idea at the time. I came back and got my GED uh, because I figured that was be more of a fast track to a career, and it was. If you've never thought about it, just think about it. Go get your GED. Just go, just go learn. Just go, just go learn. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org caregiving. Well, Cleveland County, welcome back again. We are in Corrine Broadhorst's kitchen, uh, Ladybug Bakery and Farms, and we are making some bread right now. So, Corrine, if you want to tell us what we're making and what ingredients you're using. Today, we're going to make the rustic garlic bread. Normally, I would start with the sourdough starter that's sitting in the crock, but today we don't need that for the garlic bread. Okay. So we're going to start with some honey. These come from my own bees outside, and this will help activate and feed the yeast, get things going a little bit faster. I'm going to add some yeast to the mixer, turn it on, and I'm going to start adding my extra strong, high gluten bread flour. I'm sorry, but I don't measure. This is just the way we do it. Well, and interestingly enough, there'll be no recipe from Corrine because she just 
uses the how it feels right with what you're doing and how the dough feels uh, is what she will use. That's right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some salt. The salt will control the yeast from going too crazy and it will also give us some flavoring. I'm adding some herbs to Provence in our rustic garlic bread. This is what gives it its characteristic taste. Okay. And I'm adding some olive oil. The olive oil will help bring the dough together. It'll make it softer and it'll also help the dough brown evenly in the oven. This process goes fairly quickly. We're almost done. Wow. You have a good mixer. Yeah, it, <laughs> I, it is. And does this do the kneading, you know, so the, what you would take this out and throw it, or, or will we be actually seeing you do that? You're going to see both. Okay. This machine does a good bit of the kneading. You want to do a lot of kneading with your high gluten flour, which will help build the gluten after when it's raising. Okay. I'm just scraping the sides of the bowl a little bit to get all those little bits that it missed. And we're going to continue mixing a little bit. It needs a little bit more flour and we're almost done. And you do that by touch. How the dough feels is, is to let you know if you have to add any more. That's correct. Of course, as you explained, 10 years of doing this, you know. You know when the barometric pressure is up or down. That's correct. Well, Gracious. I'm done with the machine part. Okay. I'm going to remove these hooks. Okay. And we call those dough hooks. Is that Our right? Our dough hooks. Okay. And I'm going to put it into a greased bowl okay. for rising. And it's going to sit there and rise a little bit. My kitchen's a little warm today, uh -huh. so it'll rise a little bit faster, which is good for us. Okay, it is. And then we're going to go is. ahead and do some hand kneading after it's risen a little bit. Okay. Now, have we added the garlic or will you do that? Was that the uh, Herbes de Provence? Uh, what you added or will there be actual garlic pieces that you'll use in here? We're going to add the garlic and the paprika later on when we shape our dough for the second rising. Okay. And that's it. So this guy is going to be parked here for a little bit and we're going to wait on him to rise and then we'll knead him some more and shape him. Okay. And approximately how long? Um, Based on my kitchen temperature right now, this can go as little as 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, all right. Well, that will give us time to get everything else ready and do what we need to do so that when we come back in about 20 minutes, it'll be ready to go. So, uh, and your honey, you, you mentioned you have bees. Yes. Okay, um, and I'm assuming you get more honey than this from your bees. I store my honey in three and five gallon buckets, and then I put it in the little mason jars for easy, easy. using, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. during my work. And then also in some of our conversation off camera, you also make sweet things like cookies and uh, buns with frosting on them mm -hmm. and all that. And I believe your son is also helping do all this as well, that you and he work well together. That's correct. My son, Morgan, he handles all the sweet baking in our kitchen. So that's banana bread, chocolate buttermilk bread, cookies, things along that nature. Big muffins, too. Mm -hmm. I strictly do the bread. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But uh, that really expands what you do here at Ladybug Bakery. Not only just bread, but all the other fun things to eat. Yes, yes, it does. And I find that... Many of the other bakeries that are out there doing what I do at farmer's markets, they seem to concentrate on cakes and cupcakes, and we don't do those at all. Right. So we're filling a niche in our local area. All right. Well, stay tuned here because we're going to take a break, and we're going to actually hand knead this dough that we've already worked with. It's been time. Few places are as active, as vital, or evolving as quickly as our schools, and that's especially true here in Cleveland County. I'm Rhonda Benfield, and I hope you'll join me for the next edition of School Matters. 
On each show, I talk with the teachers and administrators who make the Cleveland County system the success story it is. And we go beyond the headlines and discuss the issues facing education in the 21st century. Why? Because school matters. Lots of places have made history. And in Cleveland County, we've made our fair share. The difference is, we're still making it. With a strong economic development partnership, some of the best businesses in America are proud to call Cleveland County home. In Cleveland County, businesses make history every day, and tomorrow, even more. All right, well, we're here. The dough is risen, so let's get to work, Corrine. All right, we're going to take our risen dough. And we're going to dump it out here. And I'm just going to give it a couple little folds to help it behave while picking up some flour on my board. We're making two loaves of bread today, so I'm going to try and split it in half. I've got my little scale. And get some even pieces. And this one had a little bit too much. So, okay. off we go. All right. And this one's going to be parked here till we're ready. Now I'm going to take my dough and just kind of pre-shape it a little bit into an oblong. This is going to be the garlic bread. And this is a marble this board? This is a marble, is it marble? board. Okay. I'm going to step over here. Yes, ma'am. And go the long way first. Stretch it out a little bit. We have good gluten development. It's not springing back too hard. I'm going to widen my dough. And the gluten development comes from the yeast in there? Is that, is well, that the what happened? the yeast happened? helps the gluten activate and rise. The gluten is the supporting structure of the bread. So there are actually many strands of gluten in there which will hold up the bread when okay. you see it rising in the oven. Okay. And I've got some garlic going in here. And this is, can you buy garlic that looks, that comes in that? You can. Okay. It's did very you, did, fragrant. Did you make your own? I do not because okay. I use so much of this. I understand. And it actually keeps better when I buy it commercial. I see. So I've got the garlic spread on there. There's the herbs in the dough. And I'm going to finish off with some paprika. This also gives it a nice flavor. And when you cut the loaf open, you can see that pretty red color oh. along with the swirl. Oh. It just makes the loaf a little bit more attractive. Well, yes, and, and on the I'm finished loaf, mm -hmm, please. Roll this. I'm rolling very tightly so I don't get any air pockets in there. Because would that create like a bubble on the it crust? Would, it would create a bubble within when you cut it. Ah, okay. Mm, we don't want that. Uh -huh. We want a solid piece of bread in there. Uh -huh. I'm tucking in the edges so all uh -huh. that garlic stays trapped. Uh -huh. And I've got my loaf ready for the second rising. Uh huh. This one gets generous flouring. I'm going to pinch the seam shut a little bit. To keep all the good stuff in. Keep all that good stuff in. Mm -hmm. The top of the bread is going to go down in the basket. And the basket has ridges and this is going to sit here until it's ridden long enough to go into the oven. And it'll come out and go on a baking sheet and then into the oven. And when we're done, we'll have a loaf of bread like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then, and you'll cut it after it's risen the second time to make your I'm nice little... I'm going to score the bread when it's on the baking sheet after I tip it out of the basket and this will help the bread rise more, give it height oh, instead of width oh, and then of into course. the oven it goes. Oh, what baking tips we have just <laughs> learned right here. All right, well, now you've seen the, you, the, the be, before the finished product and the finished product and how all this worked. And Corrine, thank you. I can't thank you enough for allowing Cleveland County viewers to come in your kitchen and see what you do. See you next month.